Today I want to share with you how to make anti-inflammatory bone broth. Now bone broth by its nature is anti-inflammatory, but you can certainly add a lot of other things to boost up those anti-inflammatory properties. And that's what we'll talk about today. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest. I'm a former New York City girl, but now I live the simple life with my sweet husband here in the Texas Hill Country. And this channel is all about cooking from scratch, living naturally, and creating a cozy home. So if you're like me and you want to live the simple life no matter where you live, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And be sure to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I'm in the process of making bone broth right now. I'm soaking some marrow bones in acidulated water in my slow cooker, and I'm browning my shanks and my oxtails in the oven. And while that's going on, I wanted to take some time to talk to you about making anti-inflammatory broths, because that's another thing that I've received a lot of questions about over the course of uh, all my various bone broth videos. And I'll link to all of them uh, in the iCards in a playlist, and also in the description below, so you can go through them and see what interests you and what you want to learn about and so on and so forth. But today I want to focus on anti-inflammatory additions that we can add to bone broth. Now this applies to whether you're making beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, pork bone broth, if you get some nice pork feet and you're able to make a nice pork bone broth, fish bone broth, pretty much anything. Now as I mentioned in the beginning, Bone broth is naturally anti-inflammatory just by its gelatinous properties and the various uh, minerals and vitamins that are leached out of the bones and into the broth, and, but primarily its gelatinous nature, which is very anti-inflammatory, very healing. But you can boost up those anti-inflammatory properties by adding various herbs and spices. And pretty much any herb or spice that you like can be added to bone broth, except for one exception, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the reason is, is that all of them bring something to the table. Even the addition of certain vegetables that are very good, or actually I should say fungi, mushrooms, they're wonderful to add to bone broth. They add an additional meaty flavor, as well as wonderful anti-inflammatory nutrients. So each herb and spice does have anti-inflammatory properties that it can bring to your broth, and it really comes down to what flavors do you like or what flavor combinations do you like, because they're all anti-inflammatory in one way or another. And because each one brings slightly a little something different to the table, it's nice to add a variety over time. So one uh, batch can have one a family of herbs and spices or just one. Another batch can have a different family of herbs and spices, whatever the case may be. But I highly recommend variety. Variety will provide you with an overall spectrum of nutrients that are anti-inflammatory, but it will also help you develop and find combinations that you find you really like. Now the first thing I want to mention before we start going over the various herbs and spices is mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms you can never go wrong. They're so good for you. Even if you just use the button mushrooms. Let me see if I can open this up. I want to show you these shiitakes. But these are shiitake mushrooms and the more, uh, what do you say, sort of gourmet or fancy mushrooms you can find the better because the, I think they become more nutritious and, and these shiitakes are just beautiful. Oh, there's Obi. <laughs> you know my dog Obi-Wan. She's barking. And, but I highly recommend that if you want to make your bone broth that extra step of nutrition to add in uh, some mushrooms and just let them simmer, put them right in the beginning when you're making your bone broth and let them simmer with your bones the entire time. The other vegetables you might be adding, you know, the usual suspects are the oranges, oranges, the onions, I've got the orange peels here, so I'm thinking about it, the onions, the carrots, and the celery and then you add in mushrooms to really make the broth even more nutritious. So keep that in mind when you're at your grocery store looking around for different types of, of mushrooms. Certainly button mushrooms are good, but as you go up, as I said, the more exotic mushrooms, uh, the more nutrient rich they are and definitely worth adding to broth or bone broth. Now the go-to aromatics that I always add are black peppercorns and bay leaves. I find that both add a nice flavor that I like to my bone broth. So these are my go-to aromatics regardless of what else I add. I like the little light, almost little citrusy flavor that bay leaves tend to add. And peppercorns just, you know, add a little bit of 
little bit, of, a little bit of spice, not overly spicy or anything like that, and I put them in whole, so I'm not crushing them up or anything. But I think those are my go-tos, that no matter what bone broth I'm making, whether it's beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, so on and so forth, I always go with two bay leaves, a little bit of a small handful of peppercorns. Now I want to move through these, but before I do that I just want to mention these two here, I'll discuss in a minute. These are a bl blends that I make myself that are actually used to season the bone broth once it's been cooked and defatted and strained and all of that, the process that I go through when I make bone broth. And these help add a nice flavor to make it exceptionally tasty. Now one more thing I want to mention before we move on to the actual herbs and spices is I want to talk about citrus peels. Now I have a, a video which I'll link to where I show how I collect them and dry them and then break them into little pieces and store them uh, once they're all dried. And the reason I like to do that is I actually use them for all sorts of things, like making tea and also adding them to bone broth. And in the winter when citrus is in season, we'll be eating it, I'll be saving the peels, and then I'll dehydrate them. You can do it in the oven or in a dehydrator, whatever you have, I show it in the video. But I like to add these because there are nutrients in the peel that then when you add to your bone broth, leach into the bone broth and can be exceptionally nutritious. And scientists tell us that uh, citrus peels contain anti-inflammatory co compounds. So that's another wonderful reason, not only for the flavor, but also for the health benefits to increase our bone broth in its anti-inflammatory properties. So like the mushrooms, the citrus peels, the peppercorns, the bay leaves, scientists tell us that all of these various herbs and spices contain anti-inflammatory ingredients. So adding them to bone broth or eating them in our foods, whatever the case may be, add to calming down inflammation in the body. So let's talk about some things. Now, you can certainly always use fresh herbs. I have a nice herb garden, and so I just went outside and cut some uh, rosemary, which grows all year long here in Central Texas. And this is a wonderful uh, to add to bone broth because it has a nice flavor, but you don't want to overdo it. If you put in too much, and you got to be careful whether you use fresh or the dried, and that's another thing I wanted to mention. That's why I've got some of these out here. You can add dried herbs, dried spices, or fresh. Now with fresh, you wind up adding a little more. The When they're dried, they're a little more concentrated, so you'd add a little less. But two sprigs of rosemary for about an eight quart slow cooker or eight quarts of uh, water in your stock pot is more than sufficient. You don't want to add too much because rosemary can have somewhat of a soapy flavor and you need to be careful about that. But again, rosemary is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. And a combination that I like is to take rosemary, some citrus peels, and now remember my base, I always have the bay leaves and I always have peppercorns. But to that, then add two sprigs of rosemary, a handful of the citrus peels, and then maybe even throw in some mushrooms. It's delicious. That's a wonderful combination. Now another, oh, and I wanted to mention, when I'm talking about adding these all in, I add them right in the beginning when I'm making the bone broth, right to the point when I go to turn it on, and I take it out when I'm straining it. So anything I put in, I put in for the whole 12 hours. The only thing I don't do that with is if I'm using fresh flat leaf parsley. And the reason is parsley, uh, if you cook it too long in the bone broth, it can release compounds that can be a little hard on your thyroid. So although parsley is nutritious, I'm sorry, I think I hit the mic, parsley is nutritious and it does have nutrients that are beneficial. It's usually something I just throw in at the last 10 minutes and then I lift it out. And then I either use it in some other dish that I'm cooking a little bit or I put it in the compost pile. But uh, that is, parsley is just something you want to be a little careful with and I don't recommend leaving it to simmer for the whole 12 hours in beef bone broth or the whole six hours in chicken bone broth. And that brings me to one other point that I want to talk about that I mentioned earlier uh, when we started this video of how there's one ingredient I do not recommend putting into bone broth. And I know this may be a little controversial, <laughs> so let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. But I do not believe in adding garlic to my bone broth. 
Now, I love garlic. And my husband sometimes will even joke that after my mother, who's Italian, and I go out to eat, we always go for Italian uh, when we go out to lunch. And he'll get in the car the next day and he'll go, oh boy, oh boy, there were two Italian ladies in this car because the garlic just comes out of our pores and actually leaves an odor in the car, which is kind of funny. But I find it takes on an acrid, like an off flavor if you let it simmer in bone broth for 12 hours or even in chicken bone broth for six hours. So I don't simmer garlic in my bone broth at all. And I know uh, this has come up before and some of you had said to me that the, you, you never really liked bone broth. You always found it had a little bit of an off flavor and you were putting garlic in it and letting it simmer for the 12 hours, sometimes back in the day when we were doing it for 72 hours. And once you removed the garlic, you found that you liked the flavor of your bone broth better. So give it a try and let me know what you think. Leave the garlic out and if you want garlic in your bone broth, it's easy enough to add in when you go to reheat it and serve it up. And the nice thing is you do have the onions because I, as I said, in bone broth, my main vegetables that I put in uh, for their aromatic quality, but also their nutritional quality are onions, carrots, and celery. Celery is very high in potassium. Uh, carrots are high in beta carotene, uh, which is an early form, what goes on to form vitamin A in our body, which is very good for our eyes. You always hear, you never saw, what does my parents used to say to me, you never saw a rabbit wearing glasses. I just thought that was cute because they eat carrots. And then onions, which are very high in, forgive my pronunciation, I think it's quercetin, something like that. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce these things. But that's, onions have wonderful anti-inflammatory properties. So that's an excellent uh, aromatic to put into your bone broth. Now, garlic is good for you. I mean, we hear it's just so good for us. But adding it to your broth when you go to drink it or you make a soup with it or a gravy, whatever the case may be, that's the time to add in garlic. So you're going to get those anti-inflammatory benefits, but I just don't recommend simmering for 12 hours. As I said, I think it takes on an acrid taste. So some of the other spices that I want to talk about, which I love, is ginger. And you're probably very, you know, ginger is common, you're probably very familiar with it. And what you want to do is just, you know, break off a knob for something this size, eight quarts. I would probably break off a piece you know, about the size of my finger, three inches or so, I'd peel it and then I'd throw it into the bone broth and let it simmer uh, the entire time. And that is wonderful. Now don't worry, if you don't have fresh uh, ginger, you can easily use powdered ginger. This works wonderful and uh, you make sure, you know, talking about the jarred things, I know we all have the herbs and spices in our pantry, well most of us. <laughs> I know I'm guilty of it, that uh, sometimes you go back and you look at the expiration date and you go, oh my gosh, it's five years old. <laughs> so just make sure they're fresh. And you just put in, you know, uh, I highly recommend starting slow with these and starting in low amounts. So put in about a half a teaspoon and see how you like it. Next batch, you can add a teaspoon. You know, garlic is, a very, not garlic, but ginger is very uh, strong. And so you don't want to overdo with the herbs and spices, and especially if you're feeding children. Their palates are incredibly sensitive. That's why sometimes they'll eat things and say, oh, I don't like it, I don't taste strong to them. And we in our age group, I'm in my 60s, you know, our uh, taste buds have been through quite a bit, and so we may not notice or the strong flavor of foods as much as children do. So when I was making bone broth when my son was young, I really, for the most part, just put in a few peppercorns and a couple of bay leaves. And that with the other aromatics, the onions, the carrots, the celery, and that was it. And he loved it, he drank it every day. But so start slow when you go, especially with the, with the dried uh, herbs and spices, because they can add a strong flavor. But start with about a half a teaspoon of the ginger. Now, ginger and rosemary is a lovely combination. And ginger and the citrus peels and the rosemary is a lovely combination. Ginger and just the citrus peels is delightful. So just experiment, but these are some of the combinations I'm sharing with you that I like. So keep that in mind. Now, I wanna mention turmeric. This is fresh turmeric. It looks very much like ginger, but the only difference is you, when you see it, at, and sometimes I've seen this at my grocery store, and other times I've had to search it out at specialty grocery stores, like a Whole Foods or something like that. 
And when you peel this, it's going to look bright orange like a carrot. And you'll want to peel it and then put it into your bone broth. And a piece like this is more than sufficient. Something like just, again, about the size of my finger. And this turmeric, as we know and we hear about so often, is wonderfully anti-inflammatory. So if you uh, are looking for something to calm inflammation in your body, uh, scientists tell us that turmeric is fantastic. Now, if you can't find fresh turmeric, don't worry about it. Dried turmeric. And I, this is something that I want to mention to you, and I'd be interested in hearing down in the comments below if you've read anything like this. I recently read, and it was rather concerning to me, to be honest with you, that you have to be careful when it comes to buying dried turmeric, because sometimes, depending on where it's sourced, it may contain lead. I, I don't know if this is true or not, it's just something that I was reading, but I was a little alarmed by it. And so I did a lo little more research, and I found that this brand, Frontier Co-op, and I actually had to go to Whole Foods to find this. I had a hard time finding it. But they uh, claim uh, to guarantee that their uh, turmeric is lead-free. So I figured, well, I better get it. I drink bone broth all the time, and I use a lot of turmeric to help with inflammation. So I figured, well, maybe I better, better go with that. And this seems nice. It's organic. It says fair trade certified, non-GMO, non-ETO, and non-irradiated. I'm not quite sure what the non-ETO is. Maybe if you know, you can tell me. <laughs> but uh, so you definitely can go with this. But again, like I said with the ginger, start slow with the dried spices. Start with a half a teaspoon, even in eight quarts, and just work your way up and see what you like and what you don't like. Because dried herbs and spices can really add a punch of flavor, and it may not be something that you immediately like. So you've got to play that by ear. Now, speaking of the turmeric, a combination that I like is ginger and turmeric together. That's a one-two punch on inflammation. I mean, I just think that is wonderful. And then I do always sort of lean to the uh, citrus peels. And I wanted to mention something about the citrus peels. For the most part, uh, I can't always find organic citrus. So what I do is, before we eat any of the citrus, I wash it very well in a solution that I make that foams up nicely of baking soda and vinegar. Give it a real good scrub, let it sit for a while, and then rinse. And just hoping that that gets off some of the uh, pesticides that may be on the citrus peel. Uh, but when I do see organic uh, citrus, and when it's in season, it's often about the same price, organic or non-organic. And so I'll grab that up right away. And these, these were organic. And so I will, but I find that citrus peels, ginger, turmeric, this is a nice combination. And at the same time, just in ginger and turmeric is a wonderful combination. So keep that in mind if you're looking for something that really has a high anti-inflammatory punch to it. Then some, some other herbs that I like to add to bone broth are oregano. I love oregano. I could put oregano on everything. I think it must be my Italian heritage. I have so much oregano growing out in my backyard. And I also have dried oregano. I have a, something, a bit, bit of everything, the dried and the fresh. And I really like this. And I put, I start with a teaspoon. Now, these I feel are very concentrated, the ginger and the turmeric, the ground powder. These I start with, as I said, a half a teaspoon, but oregano, I really like it. If you like oregano, you can comfortably put in a teaspoon's worth in an eight ounce, uh, eight ounce, an eight quart uh, bone broth uh, when it's simmering. And I think if you like oregano, you'll really like the flavor that it adds. And again, herbs are wonderfully anti-inflammatory. They have wonderful uh, properties to lower inflammation, so you can't go wrong with whatever you pick. Now this is thyme. Thyme is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. It, it has, and it's similar to its name, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, if they pronounce it thymol or thymol, but uh, again, scientists tell us, tell us that that compound, thymol, is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. Oh, and I love the smell of thyme. This is from my garden. I grow a lot of thyme and I dry it and really drying herbs. I have a video and I'll link to it where I talk about how all the different ways of drying herbs. Drying herbs is very easy to do. You don't need a fancy dehydrator or anything like that. And so this is just right from my garden. And again, with thyme, I love thyme. But thyme 
does have, I believe, in my opinion, a little bit of a different, a little stronger, maybe a little different, almost slightly medicinal taste if you add too much. So try start with thyme, start with a half a teaspoon and see what you like. And again, if you're feeding children, you may not want to rush right away to use thyme because as I said, it can, their palates are a lot more uh, tuned in to flavor and they may find that that tastes slightly medicinal. So you need to be careful with that, but I love it but do start with a half a teaspoon. And this is just another time that I have here. These, I can't remember, I think either Costco or Sam's, I'm not sure, this is the Members Mark brand. And uh, these are definitely healthy sized jars. Uh, so sometimes I tend to like to buy the little smaller ones so that I use them up while they're still fresh. But I remember these were a very good buy, so I was tempted. But uh, so that's with the store-bought one. You might be able to tell, see, my homegrown one that I air dried just looks a little little greener, a little fresher. But I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're buying. The herbs are very easy to grow, and so I highly recommend that you uh, look into trying that. But don't worry if you don't grow it. The dried is good, and this uh, I think is probably going to smell. I've not opened this one, but let's give this a little little sniff. Oh, it smells wonderful. Yeah, it smells terrific. So I think that this is probably uh, a wonderful substitution if you don't grow your own. Now, another herb, and actually it's a combination of herbs that I like very much to put into bone broth. And if I do, this is Herbs de Provence. Uh, you could also use, this is sort of the French version of a mixed herb blend. You might also see Italian seasoning, which is the Italian version you know, of a mixed blend. And it's got like oregano and basil and things like that, uh, which is also nice. And again, with that, with those these seasoning mixes, you can start with a teaspoonful because it's really just a variety. And here they've got thyme, marjoram, savory. And it's nice because marjoram and savory, that's my ice maker, marjoram and savory can be a little harder to find. Then it's also got some rosemary in it, basil, sage, and lavender. And what I like, this one I actually found at Trader Joe's. I don't get to go to Trader Joe's very much. Uh, it's downtown Austin, but if we go, and I live in the Hill Country, it's a little bit of a drive into town. But uh, when we do go into Austin, and it's downtown Austin, actually, in the city, but when we go there, uh, I often love to peruse the store and see what they have. And so uh, I, I saw these herbs de Provence, so I said, oh, I'll give them a try. They're brand new. And, but I loved the little jar and the little spoon that it came with. I thought it was very cute. But uh, I, I've used other brands of herbs de Provence. I've made my own herbs de Provence. I grow a lot of lavender. That's another thing that grows really well in Central Texas. And I like to put the lavender flowers in my herbs de, de Provence, not just the, the leaves. And the reason is, Lavender is very helpful, so we're told, you know, by scientists and herbalists, that it helps with sleep. And so if I make a batch of bone broth and I add some herbs to Provence and maybe even some of my own dried lavender and some of the dried lavender flowers, I feel it makes a nice sipping broth in the evening as opposed to maybe a change from chamomile tea or something like that that's also very good uh, for helping you sleep. So that's a, a tip to remember if you're looking for making a bone broth that might help you relax and maybe get a good night's sleep. The herbs de Provence is nice and even just some straight lavender. And start with about a half a teaspoon. And if you do use just lavender, experiment a little and see what you like. Because some people may find the leaves a little strong flavored, but the flowers have a little more, a little more gentle flavor. And again, it's just experiment. Try all of these things. Try different combinations and you'll find what you like. And that's what's so wonderful because this is just a small collection. There are so many herbs and spices to choose from and all bring some form of health benefit, some sort of anti-inflammatory property to the table or to the broth. So now that we went over all of this, I just wanna mention uh, two things. I like to put, I don't put any salt in my bone broth when I make it. I like to put in some sea salt when I go to serve it. And the reason is, you know, sea salt is a living food and I don't want to put it in bone broth and have it be cooking for 12 hours 
and, and let a lot of the nutritional benefits of it dissipate. What I would rather do is I, if I'm serving it like in a mug to my husband and I for breakfast, I put a little sea salt in the mug and then I ladle in the, the warm bone broth and we enjoy it like that. And adding a little salt can really add to the tastiness of the broth and bring all the flavors together. However you make your bone broth, whether you make it very simply with just the three aromatics that I talk about a lot, the onions, the carrots, the celery, and then maybe a bay leaf or two and some peppercorns. Whatever you do, and for, depending on what you know, herbs and spices or citrus peels or mushrooms you add, it's all wonderful. But a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't like the taste, you know, and it's because it needs a little salt. And sea salt is the way to go, especially if you're trying to make something that's very nutritious and you're trying to make something that's anti-inflammatory. Use that nice, I like the Celtic brand, the Celtic sea salt. And we just put a little bit, it's kind of wet and gray, you know, and we just put a little in the, in the bottom of the cup, add our bone broth, it's delicious. The salt really brings out all of the, brings all the flavors together and brings them out all together. And speaking of adding salt to the broth once you go to serve it, I want to mention these two. Uh, they're both salts and they're citrus salts. One is lemon and one is orange. And how I make these are simply taking some of the dried citrus peel and grinding it up and then adding it in with some sea salt and grinding it up. I pick a little drier sea salt than the wet Celtic sea salt, but I pick a little drier sea salt and I just whirl them together uh, in a, a little coffee grinder or one of those mini chop food processors and so I make my own little citrus salts and it literally cost next to nothing because you're using citrus peels that you might have wise other thrown out or put in the compost pile or whatever the case may be and uh, you're just using some sea salt and you just get one of the dried sea salts they're even more reasonable than the those wet gray sea salts and these add a wonderful flavor you just put a little pinch in the bottom of your bowl or in the bottom of your cup whatever you're serving your bone broth in and they're very tasty because you get a little citrus flavor and a little salty flavor and it's delightful and i'll link i have a video where I show exactly how to make these from start to finish with drying and all of that. And I'll link to that uh, in an iCard, uh, but I'll also put it in the description below because I know sometimes I run out of iCards. I can only put five videos linked up there. But uh, I'll definitely have all of the videos that I've mentioned and talk about in the description below. If you'd like to learn more about bone broth, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make beef bone broth from start to finish. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.